Hello, everyone. How, um, how is everyone today? And hi, I'm M. Mrs. Arnold. We are going to be reading um, from New Zealand today in our reading comprehension lesson. And so let me get it up on our screen here. Our article is a health article. And it is entitled, When the Friend Who Has Your Back is a Horse. After we um, f complete our reading, then we're going to go into an activities uh, section and answer four quiz questions. And we'll follow up after that with an exit question. So I ask you to please have a pen or pencil and a piece of paper handy to jot down the exit question. Cottage staff, you will be given a worksheet for the students to answer the questions and a, you will also have an answer key for yourselves. In case that you don't receive the worksheets, then students, you are more than welcome to please use a piece of loose leaf paper the same paper you would jot your exit question on and just answer those four quiz questions there. Um, and thank you very much. And so we will begin our reading. And here's a cool picture of our horse friend here who has his back. Okay. So Christy Stokes sits high and proud on the reins as she guides Melody, a 1,000 plus pound draft horse around the barn in her pink helmet, pink sweatshirt and pink boots. Stokes follows a course set by her instructor who offers instructions and, uh, and often encourage, and often encouragement in the center. Melody walks on. Stokes talks to Melody. She's a sweetheart, says Stokes, and she listens to me. Let's see. Yeah, that's Stokes on the horse there, I'm sure. Stokes, who has special needs, sees Melody each week at Dreamcatchers, a therapeutic horseback riding center in James City County, Virginia. For the last three years, She's visited the 22-acre ranch for the physical and mental benefits of horsemanship, structured around programs from speech therapy to psychotherapy. And I do, I'm very aware of this type of therapy. Those benefits, experts say, are born out of a trust between horse and rider, a relationship like the one Stokes has with Melody. Nestled into back rows, Dreamcatchers is one of a growing number of therapeutic riding centers across the country, serving more than 800 participants since its founding in 1993. The center has been a respite for many seeking the mix of patience, honesty, and a camaraderie that advocates say only a horse can provide. The relationship says Cher Smith, communication coordinator for the Professional Association of Therapeutic Horsemanship International, that's a mouthful. The relationship can empower, teach, build trust with and help heal participants, even if their partner is a 1,000 pound animal. When you come to that animal with all of your junk, with all of your past issues, with who you are physically, that horse doesn't care, says Smith. What he cares about is, can I trust you? And this therapy yeah, I'm familiar with, if I'm not mistaken, is also called rhino therapy. A beginning with nurses. A beginning with nurses. Dreamcatcher's story begins at the Cumberland Children's Hospital in neighboring New Kent County. A group of nurses who realized the therapeutic value of working with horses started the program. The Cory the Seekich Therapeutic Riding Center 
became its home in 2004 after a family donated the land in memory of its daughter, Corey, an avid horsewoman. Served by a full staff and small cavalry of almost 300 volunteers, the ranch is a collection of barns, fences, and pastures. Around 80 to 100 participants visit each week, says Executive Director Janet Mayberry. The program's 15 horses and two therapy dogs all required careful selection, says Mayberry, for not every horse can be a therapy horse. Okay. It takes the right mix of personality and, phys and physicality, a blend of patience, sensitivity, and steadiness. There are no stallions on the ranch. The ranch there. So there are no stallions on the ranch. When Rhonda Hamlin, a mental health specialist, works with new clients, she says she first takes them to the pasture and let them watch, lets them watch. Often, she says, a horse will come near, greeting a participant's outreached hand near its nose, a horse handshake. Somehow, she says, horse and rider choose each other. Dreamcatchers has breeds ranging from miniature horses to medium-sized, Welsh ponies to large draft horses like Melody. A physical connection matters because a horse's gait resembles a human's, says Mayberry. That resemblance helps a participant build core strength and improve posture. Oh, that's the connection. The gait resemblance of human walking similar to the horse helps a participant build core strength and improve posture. Once a rider finds his or her horse, it's all about growing, growing their relationship. Horses with cones and poles. During a lesson in early February, Stokes takes Melody around the barn, weaving through cones and stepping over poles. A trainer guide the riders over a loud, loudspeaker housed in the rafters while volunteers watch with the, with the riders walk, while the volunteers walk with the riders for safety. Melody responds to Stokes' commands of walk on or woe at one point. Or woe. At one point, Stokes lets go of the reins and waves her arms from side to side above her head. The courses may look like a simple arrang arrangement of cones and poles, says instructor and barn manager Samantha Bannock, but they're more than a pony ride. Trainers can quickly adjust based on a rider's needs, changing the speed, stance on the horse, or maneuvers. Progress isn't always linear, she says, but instructors can gradually push participants to build their confidence and trust. Their, they, horses, can pick up or perceive a person's feelings or emotions even before the person themselves kind of acknowledges them, says Hamlin. Wow. So in a very ru rudimentary way, so in a very rudimentary sense, I can use them as a bar barometer and know immediately what's happening with the client just by watching what the horse does. Cool. Horses are prey animals, which means they're extremely, even if imperceptibly, sensitive to their environment, she says. That enhanced perception also requires participants to be honest, says Hamlin. If a rider presents himself or herself one way, but is feeling another, the horse will stay away in the present. Unlike a human who may hold a grudge, horses remain in the present, says Hamlin. That quality allows riders to feel accepted more easily by horses than by humans. She says, whenever participants make a mistake, she reminds them that the horse will always be willing to start over. 
The same attitude is required of writers. Before Stokes came to dream catchers, her mother, Karen, says she wrote at a different program closer to her, her home. Several years ago, Christy fell from a horse and had, had to have pins put in her knee, says Karen. But when she came to dream catchers, she didn't hesitate to keep riding, her mother says. It's not an easy thing to get up on that horse and ride. It can be terrifying, says Mayberry. So it requires trust in the people that you're working with and strength of character. Karen Stokes says she sees the change in her daughter, in her daughter, in her daughter when they come to the ranch. Christy smiles more, talks more, and parades around her confidence. And parades around her confidence. Christy engages with the horse. She talks to this horse. They have such a great relationship. She's in control of the situation, says Karen Stokes. And that is wonderful and a magnificent way for humans and horses humans and animals to connect with each other, in this case, humans and horses, and to have that therapeutic piece is, it means a lot. And so now we, um, that completes our reading and we go on to our quiz. Question number one, which of these statements best represents Samantha Bannock's approach to training the article, to training in the article? A, Bannock believes that once riders and horses have established a connection, the rest of the training is easy. B, Bannock believes that once riders can let go of the reins, they have mastered the confidence they need to ride. C, Bannock believes that riders need to move gradually by adjusting speeds and commands to build confidence. Or D, Bannock believes that riders must progress in a linear fashion through specific steps required to improve. And let's, I'm gonna give you time to reflect and answer, pause the video if you need to, and then we will go over it collectively as a group. And here are all our options. So, um, which of these statements best represent Samantha Bannock's approach to training in the article? Our correct answer is C, right? That Bannock believes that writers need to move gradually by adjusting speeds and commands to build confidence. And so let's show our answer and the correct answer is C. Our next question, which of these are the reasons or the reasons why a connection between horse and rider is important. A, a horse can perceive the emotions of his rider and react to them. Two, a horse is prey. Instinct causes it to hold a grudge against some people. Three, a horse can provide benefits for the rider only if the rider trusts it. And four, a horse's gait resembles a humans and can help build posture. So which of those two um, reasons why a connection between a horse and a rider is important? Here are our options. And you can look at the options again too, which is more important. Okay, so let's review which of these are the reasons why a connection between a horse and rider is important. So we know there are three that 
are correct. So our correct answer is D, one, three, and four, right? So let's go over the correct ones. One, we know a horse can perceive the emotions of his rider and react to them. Three is also true. A horse can provide benefits for the rider only if the rider trusts it. Trusts it. And four was also shared in the article. Um, a horse's gait resembles a human's and can help build posture. So those are the three important reasons. And two is totally incorrect. It's the opposite. Horses don't hold a grudge. It stated as humans do. So it makes horses even better than humans for this task. So our correct answer is D, one, three, and four. Let's show our answer D. And our next question, read the following sentences, sentences from the introduction. For the last three years, she's visited the 22-acre ranch for the physical and mental benefits of horsemanship, structured around programs from speech therapy to psychotherapy, serving more than 800 participants since its found, founding in 1993. The center has been a respite for many seeking the mix of patience, honesty, and camaraderie that advocates say only a horse can provide. Which answer choice best describes how the sentences develop a central idea of the article? Is it A, both illustrate the cause and effects of the growing numbers of therapeutic riding programs, the causes and effects, B, both highlights the goals and benefits of the Dreamcatcher's therapeutic writing program. C, the first sentence describes the initial goal of the Dreamcatcher's program, and the second explains how it changed over time. Or is it D, the first sentence offers a specific personal experience with therapeutic writing, and the second supports it, supports it with an expert uh, opinion? I will let you review the paragraph really quickly, briefly. And here are our options. Which one of these best describes and um, the best choice that describes how the sentence developed a central idea those sentences, central idea of the article. Those are three of our options. And here's D. And so let's review together. Which answer choice best describes how the sentence develops a sentences develop a central idea of the article. These two sentences combined develop the central idea. Our correct answer then is B. Both of those sentences highlight the goals and benefits of the Dreamcatcher's therapeutic writing program. So our correct answer for three is B. And we show our answer there. And our last question. Read the final three paragraphs of the article. What is the most likely reason why the author chose to conclude the article with these paragraphs? A, was it to indicate that Christy Stokes and her mother have grown closer through writing? B, to illustrate that Christy Stokes almost quit writing because she was scared? C, to elaborate on the reasons why Christy Stokes changed writing programs, or D, to emphasize the positive effects of therapeutic writing on Christy Stokes. Time for you to look over and answer. It's a perfect job, it's such an alert. And then our last two options there. I have my little doggy here. She's my comfort baby. 
a comfort animal. And I don't even refer to her as an animal. She's my baby or my Nala girl. And so let's review our last question. What is the most likely reason why the author chose to conclude the article with these, I meant to put it there in the present, all about Christy Stokes and how she um, was uh, terrified because she was thrown from a horse, but she got back up and in a different program and she rode again and how she's so confident afterwards and have such a great relationship and is in control of this uh, situation every time they go to the ranch together. So that is the article that is speaking of. And so our answer is the reason the author decided or chose to conclude with that article in the paragraph. Our correct answer then is D, right? D is the logical answer. He chose that, the author chose this paragraph to end with to emphasize the positive effects of therapeutic writing on Christy Stokes. So that's why he chose to conclude with that article. And so our correct answer is D. And let's show our answer and there we have it. That concludes our quiz section and our activities. And so now we go to our exit question. If you please can jot down on your paper, what is your favorite animal? Or I like to call it, what's your comfort animal? What um, pet do you have? Your pet. You can call it your animal, but yeah, pet, I call my, my baby, my, her name is Danala, but um, we call her Nala girl sometimes. And so she is my comfort baby. What is yours, your comfort pet, your comfort baby, your animal that brings you that peace and joy? I will let you jot down a few sentences and ask you that when you conclude your answers, please pass all your work into your conscious staff. And conscious staff, can you please take all the completed work once you gather and collect it from all the students to the PBX admin building? And I kindly appreciate that your support is so much appreciated. And students, I will see you on our next learning adventure. I had a great time reading with you today. I hope you enjoyed our article here. And until the next time, I would ask you to please be safe, be well, and stay safe and take care of each other. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you for sharing with me.